Hello, I'm Helen Bradley and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a 3D steampunk gear shape in Illustrator. This is the gear shape that we're going to create in this class. You're going to learn how to create a basic gear in Illustrator and then how to take it to the 3D tools in Illustrator and how you can extrude it and also how to map things like gradients and solid fills onto the various facets of the gear. To start our gear, we're going to select the ellipse tool here and I'm going to hold the shift key as I just drag out a nice large ellipse into this document. Now I'm going to flip my stroke and fill here so that I've got a black fill and I don't want any stroke at all. The stroke is just going to get in your way with these gears. So the next thing is I'm going to go and get the rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw out a small rectangle here which is going to be the tooth on my gear. I'm going to the direct selection tool, select over the bottom two anchor points here and then click the scale tool because that allows me to scale this so I can create a sort of little four-sided figure but this time with angled sides. I'll select the selection tool and I'm going to select over this shape and just place it in position over the top of my circle. I'm going to select both these objects and I'm going to click here on horizontal align center. That means that this shape here is directly over the middle of this shape. I'll click this shape to select it and now select the rotate tool over here. So I'm going to click the rotate tool and I'm going to hover over the center of this circle. And as soon as I find the center, I've got the little word center appearing here. I'm going to hold the alt or the option key and click. And that just makes sure that Illustrator is now counting the center of this circle as being the point around which we're about to rotate this little gear. Now so that we don't spend all day coloring our gear once we get into the 3D extrusion, I'm just going to make a small value here for the rotation. I'm going to rotate 45 degrees. And because I want to have the original and a copy, I'm just going to click copy. So now I have the original cog as well as a new one. And I could go and do that again, except there's an easier way to do it. Choose Object Transform and you can see that Transform again is an option. And we could press Control and D or Command D on the Mac to do this automatically. So I'm going to click Transform again to start off with to make one more gear. And then I'm going to press Control or Command D just to continue to do that until I get all the way around the circle with my gears. I'm going to select over all of these objects, the circle and all those gear shapes. Go to the Pathfinder. If you don't see Pathfinder, choose Window and Pathfinder to display it. I'm going to click Unite to make a single compound path out of all of those shapes. And now let's make a small circle for the middle of our gear. I'm just going to select the Ellipse tool and drag out a small circle here. I'm going to make it another color so that we can see it more clearly. I'll select my gear and my small circle and I'm just going to choose horizontal align center and vertical align center. That puts this dot right over the top of our gear and centered over it. I'll select both shapes and again from the pathfinder I'll just click minus front and that just pokes a hole in this gear so that we can see through it. So this is the starting gear that we've created. Let's now go and turn this into a 3D extrusion. Now before we go and create this as a 3D object, we're going to need to change color of this object because it's just not going to work with black. We're not going to be able to see the 3D extrusion because there's not going to be any shadow. So I'm going to choose a sort of mid-brown for my gear. Now with it selected, I'll choose Effect and then 3D and Extrude and Bevel. I'll turn Preview on so we can start to see the extrusion that we've got. Well, I'm going to change my Extrude Depth, so I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so that we've got a deeper extrusion to work with. Well, I think that's probably a bit too much too big. Now for the position, I've chosen Off Axis Front, but you can also rotate it a bit using any of these indicators here. And that will change how the extrusion looks. So that's basically how you create a 3D extrusion in Illustrator. But let's look at the situation where our extruded shape started off being filled with a gradient. So instead of the fill here, let's go and choose a gradient. 
you'll see that as soon as you apply a gradient fill to your shape, you lose the color of the extruded object. So let's see how we're going to fix that. Firstly, I'm just going to fix my color of my gradient here because it's not very nice at all. So I'm going to make a gradient that goes from light to dark brown. I'm going to click away from the shape and I'm going to make a small rectangle and again fill that with my same gradient. But this time instead of it being radial, I'm going to choose linear. So I have a radial gradient shown here and a linear gradient just here in the box. I'm going to take my rectangle and I'm going to drop it into my symbols panel. So you open up symbols. If you don't see it, choose window symbols to display it. Just drag and drop this into the symbols panel. Don't need to select anything here. Don't need to give it a new name unless you want to. Just click OK. Now I don't want my old symbols, so I'm just going to get them out of the way so they're not going to intrude on what we're doing. And I'm just going to delete the rectangle. Now let's go back to our 3D extrusion. Now if we want to edit this extrusion, we can't go and choose Effect 3D because as soon as we do that, we're told that this is going to apply another instance of this effect. We don't want to do that. What we want to do is edit the one we've already got. So we're going again to the Appearance panel and click on 3D Extrude and Bevel and that just edits the current setting. You want to turn Preview on. So again, we're missing any shading around the edge of this shape because we applied a gradient to the face. Well, let's go to Map Art. Because in Map Art, we can see the individual facets of this gear and we can apply some shading to it. This is the face of the gear, so I don't want to change that. This is the back face of the gear. Don't want to change that either. Now what we need to do is look every time we see one of these surfaces and see if it's a surface that we're actually seeing on this gear. Because there's no point in adding shading to surfaces that you're actually not going to see. So I'm just going to see if I can see, maybe this is one that we can color. When you get a surface that you think you can color, open up the symbol panel and select your new symbol. And if it's colorable, you're going to see it appear on the image. Now it appears that that facet is actually out of sight, but that's effectively what we're going to do. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to work out exactly what facet you're looking at. And if you're confused, you can either just go past it and try another facet, or you could just add a color to it and see if that's actually going to color it. Well, this one did. This red marker here actually controls this little piece of the image that we're seeing here. And what I can do, because I bought in this gradient fill, is I can make sure that I get sort of gradient in this area. So I'm going to click ahead. Doesn't look like that's anything I want. Maybe this is what I want. Let's check it. No, nope, it wasn't. Let's try this one instead. We're obviously looking for this piece here and that was it. And now I can move my little swatch around here. You can also rotate it and you can resize it. So what you want to make sure though is that you've covered all this area because this is the area that we're seeing on the shape there. So you don't want to leave part of it uncovered. Well, I've got an angled one there, but let's just go with that. So you're going to work around your shape looking for these facets that you can recolor. And obviously the more detailed your shape is, the more facets you're going to have to work with. So it can be a little bit on the cumbersome side, but I think I've got one here that Maybe I need to recolor as well. Yep. And let's just make that darker on the top. And so you're just going to work around this shape, looking at all the facets as you hit them and just working out if you need to recolor them or not. And picking a portion of your little swatch, your little gradient filled swatch to use. And of course, if you want more lighter area, then you just stretch out the swatch and then you'll get a lighter area in here. If you want more darker, just make the swatch a bit bigger and borrow the darker end of it. If you need to, you can rotate it so that your dark and lights go in different directions. So you have a fair bit of control in this dialogue. It's just it's a little bit cumbersome to get going with actually coloring these panels, but you'll probably get a little bit more used to as you do it, which ones you actually do need to recolor.
Once you've applied your colouring to all the facets of your shape, you can click OK and then OK again. So we now have our gradient gear shape and we've been able to colour all the edges of it by mapping a gradient onto it. And we did that with a gradient that was stored unusually in the Symbols panel. But the Symbols panel is where you get your mapping art for 3D effects in Illustrator. Now if you're interested in exploring 3D extrusion effects or making gears in Illustrator, I have some classes at Skillshare. I'm going to give you the links to each of these classes. This is a class on 3D extrusion and I have another class on creating steampunk gears and also how to texturize them in Illustrator. Now I'm going to give you links to both of these classes and the links will give you as at the time that I'm actually doing this video recording a three month subscription to all of the Skillshare content including all of my classes for just 99 cents. So I highly recommend that and you will find my classes there. I have a lot of Illustrator classes but in particular I thought you might be interested in the Steampunk and the Extrusion Effect classes since they were related to what we've been learning here. My name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.